Hello Internet, I'm Jackie Fox, and after spending some time crunching the numbers, I've got a bit of a handle on what job VCs are like for right now. I did do a video on this all the way back in October, and it feels like so much time has passed since then. I mean, I guess it has been close to half a year, but I didn't really expect how quickly some of these VCs would come out and how quickly some of these numbers would fill up. If you remember from the previous video, we had a lot of problems with certain jobs only had six vision cards or certain jobs were waiting on getting six vision cards. Well, first bit of good news is that every job on this list now has at least six vision cards. Are they great? Well, that is up for debate, I guess. So, this is also a time to start thinking about, you know, like... A couple years ago, my advice, and this stayed consistent until relatively recently, was that people who start the game pick out an element that they want to specialize in, and then maybe like a complementary element to that, something that they could use in bait teams or use to kind of supplement. That kind of shifted into choose an element and choose a job type, preferably one that kind of has synergy with that. Like, you know, if you were coming in for Sephiroth and you wanted to do dark, then maybe also worry about the Katana type teams into the future so that your Sephiroth could end up finding placement on a Katana team sometime later on. Or maybe even a Katana Red Mage team at this point because, you know, those Red Mage VCs are all over the place. Maybe you collected those as well inadvertently while doing that. But maybe it's a good time to even start thinking about a tertiary job, looking at your key partners for whatever your preferred primary job is, and saying, okay, well, what would I like secondary? What would I like to build into? Because if your job type isn't as supported into the future another one is, then, you know, always having a way to pivot or having a secondary strategy, especially when you're cheesing your way through arena, that can be really helpful for you. So just a lot of things to think about here. This is my job VC uh, tier list, and hopefully you recognize the jobs from these characters. I was trying to pick out pretty iconic representations of each one. Like, it's hard to look at Lara Croft and not think about two blaring, blazing pistols. One thing that I want to do is take a look at all of the job VCs and take a look at the jobs individually using this helpful job tool made by JB79. And with that, let's move on to our first job category. Now, how this is going to work is I've looked through all of these numbers. I've added things up. I've weighted things as I see fit. Uh, one of the things that I'm weighting highly is agility, especially having your first two agility cards. I don't give you as many points for agility cards past that. You have to have at least two to really be good and self-sufficient and to be able to be fast and self-sufficient. I think if there's anything that we want to optimize for, it's probably going to be agility, but I'm also looking very heavily at unit attack resistance and area attack resistance. I think those are important as well, even though they don't go as big into the calculation. The other thing, and this has been added to this spreadsheet system, is the key partners stat. And this is going to show the the best pairings. And in a couple of cases, there's at least six vision cards in common, which means that you could make a team that could have any combination of two different job types and still get max VC bonuses. Are they great teams? Well, not necessarily, and they are really limited by which vision cards those are and lack the variety of some of these other choices. But they are also technically viable options now, so I'm gonna talk about them as well, even though they aren't going on the general ranking. So, with all of that being said, let's rank the first one. And what I'm gonna be doing, especially here, because I've already looked at like the vision cards and rendered my analysis and judgment on them, is I'm gonna be giving each one of these guys a ranking of one to 10 for the unit pool they have available to them. And for Axe, this has been one of the things that's really holding it back. Um, and in fact, I don't think that Axe has even gotten any new units since I last talked about this. Vega is going to be getting an upgrade. Lucio is much better than I thought he would be. Um, and definitely good within his niche, which may not necessarily be an Axe team. He's really good for Earth in, in particular. Really good against Lightning especially. But I, I also think he's maybe strong enough that he could work on an Axe team. He's probably one of the strongest units here. Um... So unfortunately, I've got to give Axe, 
I think maybe like four points. There is some potential here, but there's not really a team yet. Uh, it's been floundering for a while, but I guess it could be worse. They do have a decent enough new unit. Combining that with my previous score is going to give them a score of 44. Which... Let's get down here. Grab a representative axe unit. That's going to put them just barely in B tier. So axe unit. Axe teams. Kind of middle of the road. Moving on to book. Book has finally more VCs. It's getting area and unit attack resistance, plenty of that. Still doesn't have any agility VCs, so it's kind of hurting there. But as you can see, it's got a number of key partners. One of those, and a really strong partner for this, and anytime you see five, like that's on the cusp of being something great. And I think that there's enough strong synergies here that, that the combined team of Black Mage and book could be really important especially if you're bringing in your book unit somebody like Velus as your healer to support two very offensive black mages i think that could be really strong however while there are things that i did give book a fair amount of points for i mean it's not as low as it has been one of those places of potential is definitely not its unit pool. This unit pool hasn't got bigger since the last time I checked, so no change over the last six months, and it was way behind even then. Book really needs some love, and I gotta say, one thing I guess it's getting is versatility with a lot of the more versatile classes. It might be splashable more often, but I, I still don't think this is the greatest thing. I'm also going to have to give this one maybe even a 3 for its unit pool. It's smaller than Axe, and even though I like a lot of these units individually a bit better, it's I, there's not a standout, really. Um, I, don't, I don't even know yet. No, this has to be a 4, if not even a 3. So I scored book 35. Yeah, I think I'm definitely giving them a 3. 38 points will be enough, though. to land them right on the bottom of B tier. So, where's our book unit? Oh, it's gonna be Velus. So B tier. All right, next up, Bow. This one's one that's done really bad historically as well. They do have a new unit, although I'm not a big fan of her. And I will say, um, actually they've, Wotov has put a lot of effort into building up bow and missile in terms of like what they've given them for upgrades. I want to say that Setia is doing really good and one thing that I was making note of but didn't make the key partners here is that there have been a number of missile based VCs, basically um, bow and gun v combo VCs. It's not a key partner on the spreadsheet again but I do think that those two are particularly powerful together. And as we see more of those VCs, that's kind of a natural, very good synergy. Although I guess one of the questions you want to ask is like, who else is on that team? Because maybe you don't want all three of your units to be missile units. So that may have to wait even further into the future, which is kind of unfortunate because that's kind of how bow and missile have both worked. And I think that of the two, uh, the gunners definitely have advantages here. I would also say the Gunners probably have advantages in the unit pool, but this is at least better. I'm going to give this a solid 5 for unit pool, but unfortunately for Bo, I gave them a not-so-solid 25 for their VCs. I mean, there's a number of things missing here. There's only one agility VC, and they don't have any key partners that even reach up to four vision cards, which is kind of a critical threshold. I didn't give them any bonus points for having three in common with a group, so that really held them back as well. And that is just going to put them at the very, very tippity top. The tippity, tippity, tippity top of D tier. Like, the very tippity-top. Alright, moving on. We've got dagger units. 
Well, there are two agility cards here. That is good. There are 12 cards in total, which is better than some. Um, a unit attack resistance, area attack resistance, which is two of each of those. But the thing that's really special here for Dagger is that they have a lot of interesting partnerships. At least for the teams that we've seen so far, this is pretty good. Especially having five in common with Mace, that could be a particularly strong team in the very near future. But there's also potential synergies here with Gun, which already has, oddly enough, some strong uh, synergies with Dagger units already in that that just tends to get paired together you know long range and short range in those type of units are but also spear so that's some potential for the future that did score them more points than a couple of the ones that we've spoken about recently but they didn't do particularly good and the unit pool here isn't amazing but i would say that it's one of the better ones that we've seen so far i'm not sure i want to give it a six Zidane is good we'll say a lot of these units are limited or collaboration limited and a lot of the ones that aren't are kind of the worst so I think I'll give them five points here for their unit pool which can bring them up to 42 which puts them kind of dead in the middle of B tier right between these two Okay. Moving on to Strike. Now, this is one that I am playing to amazing effect in Arena right now. It's also doing really good in Guild Battle. This is one of the first to get strong, and it is very strong. It's got all of its agility that it needs. It's got two great partners. Well, it's got two, it's got two potential partners. I wouldn't necessarily say that they're great, and that's... While it does have some partnership opportunities, I would say its partners are probably where it lacks the most. None of these partners look super appetizing for it, but I guess they all would bring their own thing to the, to the fray. The biggest deal here, though, I would say, wasn't reflected in the ratings that I did for the vision cards. The biggest benefit for this has got to be the unit pool. I mean, looking at everyone Snow and up from the UR, like Snow, Uriel to an extent, um, Edward also to an even bigger extent, um, Catone even in the discount side, 2P, but also very definitely uh, Perrine and Elia, Alphonse, best, some of the best units in the game, definitely. I've got to give these guys, I don't know if I want to pull out a 10. Maybe I want to give them a 9, but like, I definitely feel like it's not just the vision card. Like, having the vision cards is helpful, but they still dominate even beyond that because they think they have some of the best units in the game, some of the best ones to invest in when they were good, and like, even Snow coming back into this has been really strong for my team. Like, I just... I guess I'll only give it 9 points. I don't know. It feels like I'd be biased to give it more than that. It's not absolutely perfect. There's not like a perfect three in here, although, oh boy, there are a lot of really competitive threesomes out of this. I mean, definitely better than anything we've seen so far, like by a mile. I think I can only give it nine points though, which is gonna give it 47 points in total. And that is gonna put it as our very first A tier job class type. Will we have any S tier job class types, considering that that is certainly one of my favorites. This is probably a little bit subjective, and it's still only A tier. Will we even see the S tier reached? Well, next up is going to be one of the more interesting ones, I've got to say, and that's going to be Glove. Not the most interesting, and the most interesting may actually make it into S tier. But for Glove, we don't see any unit attack resistance, but we do have agility and area attack resistance in spades. We also have really strong partnership, six vision cards with red mage, and also five vision cards with axe. And it's at this point that I want to do something a little bit special, and I want to introduce you to kind of 
not necessarily a template. I'm not necessarily saying that these are the best units for it or the best strategy, but this is two ice red mages and a glove unit. So we have a lot of synergies here, but one of the things that I really wanted to show off for this is that this specifically is the six cards that they share in common. They will be getting bonuses from all of these cards. And as you'll see, because I've used all of the vision cards, this really leans hard magically. This is for a magical combination, really. That's why I had to include Howlett. He's not my favorite unit. I would rather use Reagan. I would rather put, say, Ferris on here. There are definitely better, or there are definitely red mages that I like more. Howlett is good, um, but because I needed another magical red mage, I just felt like including him made the most sense. This team kind of makes sense itself. It looks kind of like a bait defense team. Um, again, the, the whole strategy may not pan out super well, but it at least makes a certain amount of sense and uses all six of these vision cards to great effect. So that's a kind of example of the things that could be done with the two of these. In terms of uh, just raw points I actually scored glove as high as I did strike and those partnerships actually helped it out quite a lot One of the differences with strike though is going to be that there aren't as many great units here We do have Renoa who I pointed out but as I was looking for a Well specifically a non-limited glove unit that was good um, Well, I mean there isn't one like, to get to a non-limited unit on this list, you have all, to go all the way back to Sweetheart, Salir, and Garvel. And then there's Revelka. There are a number of cool units. Uh, Renoa, I especially really like. Um, Zoma's gonna be stuck for a while. Hope really sucks. <laughs> More the merrier is pretty decent. I think her stonks are gonna be increasing into the mage meta. And... You know, Addison Ray, Summer Helena are pretty decent themselves. There's not terrible units here, but I, I don't know. It's just missing something. Like, this is either a 4 or a 5, but I think I'm going to go for 5 points here. That's going to bring them to a total of 43, which is not quite enough to get them out of B tier. Maybe next time. I think it does put them closer to the top. Okay, moving on. Great sword. So, lot of vision cards here. Lot of stuff going on. A couple of key partners, but no unit resist cards. I guess this is okay. They take shrapnel well, but if you target them specifically, they're not as strong. They do have three agility cards, which I wasn't giving bonus points or as many bonus points to the third agility card because it's a little bit redundant. But, you know, at least it gives you a variety. It gives you options for getting that agility. And one of these agility cards might be a little bit lower in power. So, you know, it is what it is. Um... Looking at the units that you could use for this, there's a lot of cool options here. If you need to protect barriers, you've got A2. She also has some self-healing and kind of healing properties herself. That's not something that you're going to see, especially healing others. Not something you're going to see on a lot of great sword units, so it makes her particularly unique and invaluable. Um, Astrius has a follow-up skill, which can be really helpful. Joom makes a pretty good tank. Even even to this day, not as good against magical, not as going to be as good going into the mage meta, and she's starting to show her age. Speaking of being old, though, we've got old 100 cost Stern. He's actually getting pretty good with updates, but I'm not sure which forms of PvP, like the multi-match PvP, is going to be great in. But single shot, he should be uh, pretty explosive, as he always has been, but a little bit more durable so that he can keep exploding. Um, there's some fringe units here, like we've got Cloud, Auron can be okay, Velric is going to be better with his upgrade, but not great. There are some new units here though, um, A2 especially I'm excited about. A2 on Rainbow Teams I think is probably the best application of A2, and again, just having a greatsword unit that can heal herself and others is pretty neat. Not a tech I expected to see from A2, who's usually more of a berserker. So I think I'm going to give this not the best score I have, but certainly above the average uh, by giving it six points. 
Now, Greatsword did score really high in terms of VCs. This was because it stacked having a lot of agility VCs, having some key partners in Book and Devout, which I think will help support it a lot. It'll help make up for the fact that A2 is the only healer for them. Um, all of those things gave it a relatively good score. So the combined score here is going to get them 50 points, which is enough. My great sword. Ah, Cloud. Cloud is going to get his way into A tier with Strike. So Strike and Great Sword are doing the best so far. Next up, we have Gun. So Gun only has one agility card, which is unfortunate, but it does have a good spread with its other cards. 12 cards in total is pretty good. It also has a really good partnership with Red Mage, but <laughs> a lot of people do at this point, as you've probably noticed. And also a good partnership with Dagger, which we discussed earlier. These things help it out a bit, and it does have some newer units. There's also a lot of support that's been given to some of the older missile units, like Alaya. Um, so Elia is particularly powerful now. I also think Melnia is pretty good. I don't see Rulgia very much, but he's alright. Um, Irving's okay. I think one of the bigger benefits for this job type has been that it's gotten just some better vision cards recently, and some more of the vision cards that it needs. This vision card in particular, which is also good for Dagger and Strike and, and Bow, um, is a combined gun bow card and was free and is a hollow VC that increases crit damage So a lot of things to like there. That's really helped this set out I would say that there's some new power here. I would definitely rate this a little bit lower though I don't think that missile in general uh, Does quite as well. So even though there is some newer power and some newer reason to be excited I think this one was kind of on the low end of what I was excited about unit wise before so I think it's kind of bumping itself up to average, which is going to be uh, about a 5 for me. With that being said, how many points did I give Gun? Did I write Gun down? 36. Alright, so that's going to bump them up to 41, which is going to put them uh, about the middle of B tier. There are a lot of people in B tier. Don't feel too bad about it. You're right in between Glove and dagger i feel like this is kind of the point where b tier is okay above this point and and just bad below it in fact like really i think i think glove is probably better than axe too there's definitely some well i don't know there's definitely some issues with glove but having a red mage synergy i think maybe puts them over the top at least uh they can sub in some better units for their although red mage has its issues too but we'll, we'll get to that all right Next job type, Katana. So there's a lot of good Katana units here. There's a lot of new, or at least a couple of new Katana units here. Newly updated Katana units as well. So a lot of things that could work here. There is some synergy for wind specifically here. Not really what we're talking about, but this also isn't one of the most uh, prolific of types. You know, there haven't been as many of this sword type as there have been of some other sword types. So they're, they're pretty good. Um, one of the real advantages here though, despite the lack of unit resistance, 15 vision cards in total. There have been a lot of katana vision cards and that's gonna get them a lot of base points for having such a massive vision card pool. That being said, I don't think I can give them a, an absolute ton of points for unit selection, although I will say there's some definite heavy hitters here, and having access to a relatively new tank is also quite powerful for them. I think it's really going to rejuvenate them, and I've got to give them some extra points for that, because um, I think that there's still viable teams here, and teams that I'm excited about, even though it may not be the best, so... If I were being really generous, I would say 7, but I think it's just above the average curve, and Dario is probably the thing that's pulling that 6 closer to a 7, but I think I'm going to have to just say above average and go with 6 points for this unit selection. Um, they did really well on my other rating, though, getting 49 points. That's going to get them to 55, which is the absolute top of A tier. Moving us on to Mace. Mace has a really, 
really good spread of vision cards, y'all. Some of the most vision cards of any group in the game, unit and area resistance too, so you can stack both of those things for maximum resistances, and four agility cards, so you can mix and match and select, and you don't need all of them, you can just have some of them. Lots of cool things to love there. Also, a lot of partners for this group, five with dagger, four with spear and four with strike. I would say that um, spear and strike being some of the strongest job types, just in competitive, this has got to be a really good bonus for mace. It's, it's you know, it gives you an option to put a mace unit in to support a team and bring in things that it doesn't usually have. To that end, this is a lot of healers, essentially. I would say some of the least healery of these would have to be like Mashari and Garnet but there's a lot of healers and very supportive characters in here. So running mace by itself, I would say the unit pool isn't amazing, but when you think of it as a supporting job type, it gets better. So I can't give it full points for that necessarily, but I do think there are some definitely good supporting units here. And also there's some great units here just in general. I think this team could be pretty good. There's somebody in one of my guilds that's running a mace team that <laughs> says my team looks like a meme, but it's doing great. And, you know, I get it because you absolutely have a great vision card selection. That being said, my previous rating is all about that vision card selection. I'm not going to give any bonus points to that here. I just think that a lot of these units could fit into another team really well. And there's uh, certainly a number of units here that together could be a really powerful team. Like, for instance, if you had Roth, because they have their own tank, which is great, especially when so many of your units are good at sustaining. And then you could go Earth and maybe even use Earth VCs to fill your gaps with Mashari and Garnet. Garnet was a free unit, although she is limited. So that's just kind of adding to that strategy. Um, yeah, I would say this is actually pretty good. Maybe even enough to give it seven. No, six points. Six points. I want to give it that seventh point because these. this is a good unit pool for being supportive of another thing. But I've already given them a total of seven points for their partners. Um, four points, I give two points, and then every point beyond four, like five, six, I give an additional point. So five counts for three, fours count for two. And three don't fucking count because that's not strong enough to be a competitive synergy. So with that six points, Mace is gonna go from 47 to 53, which is gonna put them a little bit low in A tier, but definitely a very strong team. Up there near the top for sure. And then we got Ninja Blade. Man, what a... Uh... I'm getting whiplash here, honestly. Um, there aren't many ninjas. There's, uh, it looks like, seven in the entirety of the game. So, obviously, the unit selection here is going to be pretty bad. Um, the newest unit here is Yuffie. And she's not even a 100 cost unit. There's only 100 cost unit among all of these. Um, I will say that because they have... It's a job that has a really strong niche in that when it evades well um, and when evasion is working, it, it does work. So units like Katone, Yuffie, Zazan, um, Ildira, even Shadow Links to a certain degree, they can check teams that otherwise they shouldn't be able to beat. So this can get kind of cheesy, but I don't necessarily think it's powerful. It's definitely not a strong unit selection. While there is a good thing or two here, I really think that this team is going to have to rely on its partners, and only the only good one at this moment is Devout, which is good for support, I guess, but it feels like a really bad partnership to have. Um, the Valts are on most of their vision, or over half of their vision cards, but they only have seven. They only have one unit resist vision card, no area resist vision cards, and probably the cardinal sin here is no agility vision cards, which is especially crushing for evasion, evasion type strategies and an evasion type job like i don't get it are they just waiting to do all of these and they're all going to be back-to-back -back ninja cards that are agility but do fill in gaps for other elements that need agility cards i don't know but this seems really really uneven incredibly uneven i had to give ninja blades uh 17 total points for their absolute lack of selection of vision cards even though i thought with free vcs and some of the earliest things that came out this is going to be good they pretty much stopped making 
any 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 real support for it after a certain point and um it's it it, it would didn't start in a good place necessarily and that place didn't get better um the unit pool is almost even more embarrassing though i've got to give this like a two i mean you've got yuffie i like katone that's two units that i really feel good about here at least katone got updated recently um so did Eldira, but I, I don't think I can, good conscience could give this more than two additional points. You know what? Fuck it. I'll give them three. I'll be generous. I'll give them three. I give them 17 for their vision cards. They're getting a total of 20 points, which is about 10 points below the top of D tier. So uh, definitely on the bottom, even getting stomped by Bo. Like, how do you get stomped by Bo? That has been the worst for such a long time that's almost a meme, what is going on? But we're definitely seeing that this is a little bit more balanced than it could be. There are definitely some heavy outliers and we'll get into some more outliers here soon. One of those is gonna be Spear. Um, first of all, there's a lot of Spear units now. And there's a lot of recent spear units. The spear unit selection here is pretty gorgeous. In fact, we've got a brand new unit in Fang. Um, Glacella just got updated to be, you know, a standout unit all over again. Dialdo is a pretty excellent tank. If you don't have Dialdo as a tank, then Elda is pretty tanky. You have a free Veritas unit in Veritas of the Winds if you can build him up. Jane the Celebrated is also pretty good. Um, there's and then this is just talking about like the obvious standouts any of the other units here um, Volke coming in the future Could support a team that is has at least two of those other units. There's also 14 vision cards here So some of the best uh, you have four uh, cards that provide unit resistance So best selection of that in the game really two for area attack resistance which is all you need two for agility which is all you need although you don't get a lot of selection in getting those things. You may have to use some of the same vision cards to really get those key points. But you have what you need. Also, a lot of key partners for Spear. And I would actually wager to guess that there's more than this. But I, I didn't crunch the numbers myself. Um, it seems like Spear is moving into a very, very versatile future. Which means that this spear units could kind of be like the glue for other compositions as they're coming together but right now especially running lancer myself i, I gotta say this is a very good composition um, mine is way more oriented on the recent wind and water i could definitely see getting dialdo in there to strengthen it to make it even more stubborn uh, uh this is probably one of the best unit selections that i've seen maybe not quite as good as strike so i've got to give it eight points instead of nine there i guess um, but I also gave it 50 points, a stonking 50 points uh, for its VC selection because yeah, that's amazing. And there's another VC coming here in the future that's just gonna make it better. So that's a total of 58 points, which definitely puts Spear in S tier, all the way up in S tier. That's our first S tier already. I bet you didn't expect that Spear was going to be beating everybody. That was that was a little surprising for me too, actually. Alright, so moving on, what's next up? We're finally getting into the Swords and Staves. And this is going to be one of the strongest ones here. 18 Vision Cards. Uh, there are two very notable problems here though. A lack of unit resistance with only one. There are five area attack resistance, so best selection of area attack resistance cards in the game, but no agility cards, which is such a drawback to this. That being said, so many key partners, and there are more than are on this list because I remember mentioning them for a number of other things. Theoretically, that adds some more points to them, and I can add a point or two into their unit pool for that because there's definitely more key partners than that. And, you know, with that many vision cards, there almost has to be. So definitely, this is one that got a really stupid amount of points from its uh, VC selection. Let's see if it can keep it up with its unit selection, though. There's a stealth... Um, red mage team between these first four units that uh has been kind of a water and ice thing which is just really stellar um a lot of times you don't even recognize it as a red mage team 
because it just looks kind of like a natural water and ice team. There's also a lot of variety here for like light. There's a lot of light potential for Red Mage, so um, a weaker Red Mage card pool if you <laughs> somehow don't have a bunch of these cards could substitute in a lot of light or even water or even ice to really kind of supplement because you could build teams entirely out of each of those elements from this unit pool. That being said, once you get past the first four to maybe five or six units here, there's a pretty major drop off and there's also some just uh, synergy issues through this as it's a very hybrid class. I mean, although it's not actually hybrid, it's it's a physical and a magical class, and I don't think there's as many other jobs that have to deal with that quite as much as this. So it kind of needs that excessive job uh, number of job VCs because it needs a magical set and a physical set, um, and you can mix and match there for sure, but this does turn out to be pretty versatile. Also, I want to point out that with seven key partners for Red Mage and Katana, a potential Red Mage and Katana team could look something like the first th three we see here. And these are probably the cards that I would prioritize. You'll notice here that uh, kind of the inverse of the Glove Red Mage team, this is very physically oriented. There are only three magically based cards um, for this and one of them is really uh, supportive of light so if you wanted to run either Sylvie or Elena you could run them on this type of a team with that card to gain that bonus there but I think for right now it's definitely going to be encouraging you to use more physical units so maybe Dario being one of the newer units Sephiroth being just like a staple of the Katana meta and then Ferris being a really good kind of middle ground between being offensive DPS and kind of like supportive healer in some of the ways that Dario can be as a tank. So I feel like these three really kind of cover each other's bases and that set of vision cards should help them and just kind of grow into the future. So if you want to play Katana and Red Mage, that is definitely a very, very, very strong synergy. And um, I almost want to make this its own marker on this list just to put it ahead of Ninja Blade and maybe even Bow because I think if you just kind of rated these by themselves they would still, in a lot of respects, <sighs> beat Ninja Blade at the very least for fuck's sake. So with all of that being said... I gotta give them like a 6 or a 7 for their unit pool. I said I was going to give them an extra point maybe for having more key partners than this graphic lets on. So let's, I'm, I'm happy moving that up to 7. That'll be fine. They got 56 points as, uh, as a thank you for all the glorious vision cards. Um, but actually I want to I wanna push that back just one point because again, because of the physical magical split within this job type, um, maybe those aren't maybe it needs more in some ways so that still puts it 62 points which is way more points than it needed to get to the top of s tier so red mage and lance are the best job types in wotiv so far but we're not quite done let's get to the more neglected sword types so warrior is kind of mid but did better than i thought it does have 11 vision cards unit attack resistance is all over the place so that's great uh some versatility there also same story for agility three agility cards so it's got spaces covered and then some it doesn't really have any key partners and it doesn't really have any area resistance the key partner it does have his black mage which i think is coming up on its own but i don't necessarily see you running these exactly in a team together although i mean there are some options for this like i'm sure it could work well in light with the new lucio or even bart's bart's lucio and new helena particularly good uh seem like a particularly good combo but there are a lot of more dated units on this list uh sorrow probably isn't ever getting updated to 140 anytime soon same deal for Violet, I think. Um, they've really been pushing Mont to keep him afloat, and he is still viable and is still kicking my ass sometimes. He's just a really good tank even to this day. 
um, and has probably like had more staying power than a lot. So it's really these top three units. I gotta say this is pretty, pretty mid. <laughs> Just I, uh, those top units aren't terrible, but eh, I'm not really seeing a strong synergy here. This feels like the middest team to ever mid, and I feel like I would just stomp all over it. So in terms of unit pool, I've got to give it like the middest score I can, maybe a four or even a five. Um, you know, like it's so mid, it's not even quite average maybe. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I think this has got to be a four. It got 37 points for its vision cards, which is, I'm not gonna lie to you, only better than gun, book, bow, ninja, and knight. Oh, spoiler alert. Um, so 37 plus four is only 41 points. And according to my handy dandy little scoring chart, that's gonna place warrior. Like right about here in B tier. Definitely filling out B tier towards the bottom. Moving on and getting really close to the end, we got Knight. And yes, this one scored even lower on its vision cards than Warrior did, has a lot of the same problems. Doesn't really have any key partners other than Strike, and that's not necessarily something I see you using together. Um, and that's and, and, and these scores are bad, even counting the future VC, so ooh, woof. Um, there are actually some good units here though. Celeste is great in her own way. She's probably one of the more aged of the units I'm going to shout out out of here. Um, but she was dominating in her day. Lightning has come back into power in a pretty decent way. She's not the best, but she's, she's definitely viable. Bradley is starting to show his age and without any future updates coming his way, I think he's going to be falling out more and more, but he's still pretty good. Um, Stern is... Stern is, I think, overtaken him, maybe, in being about as good at his role, but better, because he's gotten updates in the way that Bradley hasn't. And then Squall was a little bit disappointing from the start, but isn't a terrible unit. He just isn't the best either. He's kind of mid, but not terrible. So there are good, usable units here, things that I can be excited about. I can definitely say more that I like this pool of units than Warrior, which felt like oddly tankier, even though this is a set that includes Engelbert, which isn't a bad thing, especially since there's so many good DPS units here that you could really throw in an Engelbert into a party like this and have a good uh, offensive strategy physical night party, which, which wouldn't be that bad. Um, the BC support there isn't amazing. I gave that 30 points, and I think I'll give the units another five. It's not as bad as Warrior, but it's not... Okay, maybe six, maybe six. We'll give it six points. So that's gonna be a total of 36, which according to my chart here is gonna land it in the very top of C tier. So we're kind of filling out. <laughs> Finally, we've got a C tier. What's up next? We've only got two more of these to go. Black Mage Staff is next. So 13 vision cards, but they get a lot of the important ones. They get three unit attack resistance, three area attack resistance. So we've got some options there. Two agility cards, which are all you really need. That's great. We're also looking at a lot of key partners and maybe even more than this graphic indicates. Book being the best one with five, but also Axe, Katana, and that's Warrior. warrior yeah looking at the unit pool here i think this is where this really shines especially when you just think about how strong old zoa helena and vivi will be together like this team alone is going to kick so much ass and apologies to uh some viewers in my recent videos i keep forgetting or not realizing or some combination of those two that um unfortunately veritas of the waters doesn't fit into this group which is unfortunate. Hopefully there are some synergies with Devouts. There are not. They. It does not look like they really share any vision cards with Devouts, unfortunately. Uh, there's one, and I, I think it's more physically based. Great. 
I don't know why both of them got on that card. Um, so this is gonna, this looks like a really strong team together, but there are other good units here. Tark Fina is definitely very powerful. Um, as we get more and more area attack resistance, her being a very strong unit attack and unit attack breaker is just a compliment to her physical capability, or her magical capabilities, her offensive capabilities. But Lena also has double re-raise, so this is kind of like um, a way to get Sodley on this team without having Sodley on this team because he's a mace unit. So I would say that the unit pool here is actually one of the better ones that I've seen. Um, it's definitely a 7. In fact, I'm pretty sure I can talk myself into giving it an 8 because this feels really general and it feels like it's going to have a lot of options into the future. It, it feels like this kind of thing should get more and more um, as things go on. This should be kind of the red mage of the staff subdivision. That being said, Devouts are often a lot better than I remember them being. So yeah, 8 points for this, for sure, for sure, for sure. Black mage also got 46 points in my previous assessment, so 46 plus 8 is going to be 54, which is just about the tippity top of A tier. So right up here. Then our last group is Devout. So they only have 11 vision cards, but they make good use of them. They get all the unit attack, all the area attack, and all the agility that they need with no real diversity there, but that should give you six cards that will maximize those three options. Also, lots of key partners here, maybe even more than are indicated because this is a good supportive um, set. And there are some good supportive units here, but there are also some bangers. So I'm kind of surprised how mixed both of these got. I would have thought that one of these would be more like support, one of these would be offense, defense, that kind of thing, but they're both a little bit mixed, which I guess isn't that bad. I wish Veritas of the Waters was in the Black Mage group, and it would make sense for Helena to be in there too, and there would make sense for a couple of the other units to be over here, but um, definitely some options for support, like the job that it's named after Devout, but also some offensive options as well. Um, Omnilus is going to be really good at hunting evasion, Soul is really good at hunting strike, and I think that Veritas of the Waters is going to be hunt good for hunting mages and inflicting statuses upon them. So definitely some options here, but mm, I'm not as excited about this by any means as I am Black Mage. So this is a 6, maybe a 7. And uh, you know what, I think I'll give them the 7. Because A, this is a good supportive set for the most part, and that's going to help with them having a lot of key partners. But also, they probably have more key partners than are indicated here, so lots of reasons to give them bonus points. So I'll bump them up to 7 points for that. They got 40 points for their vision card spread, because it's not bad, it really covers the right bases. So it's going to be a total of 47 points in total, which is going to put them right about the bottom of A tier. So maybe something like that. So this is how it ends. This is where we're at. Um, Red Mage is the best. It has the most support, although maybe it needs a little bit more support than some of these others. It has pretty decent units, although I think the unit pool could be a little bit better. It wasn't my favorite unit pool. It doesn't quite have the unit pool of, say, Strike or Spear. Um, but it is pretty powerful. One of the real special notable bonuses for Red Mage is that it pairs... Um, that it can make a full VC team with both Glove, which is in the B tier, and also Katana, which is in the A tier. It's also notable that one of the strongest synergies here is with the Katana, which is A tier. And that, you know, for the most part, while it would be very limited, um, just the small subset of Katana and Red Mage cards and that that selection of units itself could probably be at least B tier, even though, again, that's really gonna limit the number of vision cards to a pool that's as low as what Ninja Blade has, naturally. Um, so that's definitely gonna pull things down, but you know, being able to access both unit pools will pull it back up a little bit. Um, and I think over time, we're gonna see that the unit pool becoming diverse from those type of combinations is gonna be a, maybe more helpful 
than having more vision cards to work with because now we're hitting the point where everyone has enough and everyone can really shine except for you know some people but you know if you're not a knight or an archer or a ninja then things are pretty good for you things are relatively balanced and you have some potential if your glove axe gun warrior dagger or book better days are probably ahead <laughs> i mean i'm not saying that these things are going to get improved but they have potential now and could get better into the future but if you are looking at black mage katana mace strike great sword devout red mage or spear especially those two are doing really great then you definitely probably have a solid team right now and a really solid strategy and synergy and if you don't if that's what you're building for then those can be really good for you so hopefully this makes sense for you and helps you and i really hope that it helps people plan like it can be really hard to wrap your head around the complex web that is the job vc system it's nowhere near as streamlined and simple to think about as the elemental system so i really find that measures like this that take in multiple factors of information and really try to like quantify that and break it down into something that's a little bit more objective than subjective even though the parts of it are often kind of subjective i really find that that helps me come to the proper conclusion and not just the conclusion that i want because like if this had been entirely up to me i probably would have been like well yeah that's going up there for sure okay katanas are pretty good yeah we can do that uh mace doesn't seem all that fun Greatsword seems pretty metal. Okay, actually, Black Mage, for sure. Number one. Nah, Strike's number one. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, there, there would have been all sorts of shenanigans like this, so... If you appreciate me leaving it up to the data, then let me know in the comments... And let me know what you thought of my conclusions. Are you running any of these teams? Do you have any experiences? Do any of them have like a strange weakness or a chink in their armor that you've noticed? Um, what do you have to do to make your builds for a specific type work? Is there a trick to getting a rainbow party to synergize well together other than just the rainbow VCs? Are there certain things that you're looking for in say a strike team that you wouldn't be looking for in a strike unit on say an elemental team or something like that? Let me know what your thoughts on all of those things are in the comments and uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Be sure to check out that link in the description if you want to see more Jackie Fox content. There's all sorts of other stuff out there in the ether that you could pick up just browsing across the far plane. So that's all going to be through that link. And well, with all that being said, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.